Auspicious greetings to all Dharma friends. This is Yu Den from Dongzhen Buddhist College in Malaysia. Nice to meet you all again. This time, I would like to share the story of the ten great disciples of Buddha. Each of them has own expertise and achievements. They have an indelible credit for propagating the Buddha's teachings. To this day. They are the same as the Buddha that will be admired by future generation. Sariputra, Sariputra was one of the top disciples of the Buddha who foremost in wisdom. He was born into a noble Brahman family in Makata. His father was a noted Brahmin scholar. When his mother conceived him. She had extraordinary wisdom, which was believed to be influenced by the baby in her womb, Sari, being his mother's name. He displayed great wisdom since a young age. At eight, Sariputra was able to understand all the books he read. At twenty, he left his home and began to search for the truth. Sariputra and Malgadiyana were childhood friends. Both know life is impermanent, and were determined to find way to liberate from suffering. They became a disciple of Brahmin scholar Sanjaya. However, they were not satisfied with the teaching, and eventually left Sanjaya. After they left Sanjaya. Sariputra encountered the monk Asazi, one of the Buddha's first five Arahat disciples, while walking on the street. Asazi has attained Arahatship after several years of practices and listening to Buddha's teachings for noble truth. Sariputra noticed the serene look of the monk and approached the venerable and respectfully asked him. Who is your teacher? And Asazi told Sariputra, "My teacher is Sakamuni Buddha." What doctrine does your teacher teach? Asazi shared with Sariputra, "All things arise and extinguish due to the causes and conditions." Upon hearing the teaching, Sariputra was touched and attained his first enlightenment. Sariputra shared with. Malgarayana is encountered with Asazi. Both Sariputra and Malgarayana knew Buddha was the true teacher. Together with two hundred disciples, they went to bamboo grove, visit Buddha, and ordain as monks under the Buddha. After Sariputra and Malgarayana ordain, the Buddha declared them. His two chief disciples, Sariputra, was said to have attained enlightenment as an arahat two weeks after ordaining. Regarding Sariputra's past life, it's about sixty eons ago. Sariputra vowed to practice the way of Bodhisattva and offer alms to the needy. He was willing to give away all his property, even his body and life. A deva decided to test Sariputra's determination to achieve Bodhisattvahood. One day, a deva disguised himself as a young man. He cried sadly when he saw Sariputra walking towards him. Sariputra approached him and asked what had happened. The young man said. My mother is suffering from an incurable disease, and the doctor said that in order to cure her disease, an eyeball of a monk is needed to brew medicinal herbs. But where can I find a monk's eyeball? Replied the young man who was still crying. Sariputra decided to give his eyeball to the young man. Thinking he would still be able to see with the other one. Therefore, despite the pain, Sariputra dug out his left eyeball and gave it to the young man. However, the young man said, "Oh 
no, the doctor said that only the right eyeball can cure my mother. Sariputra was very shocked to hear that, but he only blamed himself for not asking the young man before taking out his eyeball. Determined to help the young man, Sariputra briefly dug out his right eyeball. Without thanking Sariputra, the young man took the eyeball and smelled it. Then he threw it on the ground and scolded Sariputra. Your eyeball is very smelly. How can it be used to brew medicinal herbs for my mother? After that, he even trampled on the eyeball. Though Sariputra could not see, he could still hear. He then thought, it is difficult to save all beings and be a Bodhisattva. I think I better concentrate on the practice of self-cultivation. Just then, many devas appear in the sky. They said to Sariputra, Don't be dejected. What has just happened is only our arrangement to test your determination to become a Bodhisattva. You should briefly progress on. Upon hearing that, Sariputra resumed his compassion to save others. For the next 60 aeons, he never stopped his spiritual practices. During the lifetime when he met Buddha, he was able to achieve final enlightenment and also attain divine vision. Buddha trusted Sariputra very much after Sariputra became his disciple. Once, Buddha assigned Sariputra to propagate Dharma in the northern part of the country, where the heretical groups could be found everywhere, and at the same time to supervise the construction of Jetavana Vihara, a park belonged to Anatta Bindika, a wealthy elder, brought it from the prince and gave it to the Buddha for the use by the Sangha. The heretical groups were jealous of Buddha's development of Dharma in the northern part and against the building of Jetavana. The well-read Sariputra, who was also an expert in heretical books and records, successfully defeated the heretics in a debate session with a large panel of heretics in northern part. As a result, many people, including some of the heretics, were converted to Buddhism. The construction of Jetavana was also completed smoothly. When the monk Devadatta created a schism in Buddha's monastic community, he demanded Buddha gave him the authority to lead the Sangha community. When Buddha refused, Devadatta betrayed Buddha and let some of the Buddha's disciples away. Sariputra managed to get the disciples returned to Buddha community. Though Sariputra, who had great wisdom and divine power, was a chief disciple of the Buddha, he always followed and obeyed the Buddha's instruction. When Buddha's son, Rahula, joined the Sangha, he asked Sariputra to be his teacher. One day, Rahula followed Sariputra to pay for food and returned to the monastery with a sulky look. When the Buddha asked him why he was unhappy, the young Rahula replied resentfully, Buddha, when we are out to pay for food, the devotees always give food to the elder monks. And to the younger monks like us, we usually offer food with no nutritious value. But everyone needs food to maintain his health. And our elders never take care of us when they receive the good food. The Buddha knew very well that nutritious food was necessary to maintain health. However, Buddha's lecture Rahura for being too concerned about food when he should pay his attention to his practice. After Rahura left, 
Sariputra was called to see the Buddha. Sariputra, do you know that you have eaten unclean food today? Asked the Buddha. Sariputra quickly threw up the food taken on that day and said, "Lord Buddha, ever since I became your disciple, I have always been following the rules of going for alms food set by you." And never dare to accept any unclean food. The Buddha then explained, "Sariputra, I know you have been observing the rules accordingly, but one cannot just mind his own business in the sangha. Rules should be fair for everyone, and benefits should be equally distributed." It is the responsibility of the elders to take good care of the younger monks, even when begging for food. Sariputra was not angry at all after hearing that. Instead, he gratefully accepted the teachings of the Buddha. Sariputra propagated the Dharma even when he was nearly eighty years old. When Buddha announced that. He would be entering Parinirvana after three months. Everyone was very sad. Sariputra could not bear to see Buddha enter into the final nirvana, and he thought, as a chief disciple of the Buddha, he should enter nirvana before Buddha. Sariputra seek Buddha's permission to enter nirvana first, and finally got the Buddha's consent. To return to his hometown to visit his old age mother, and enter Nirvana at his hometown. After Sariputra had entered Nirvana for seven days, Kundi cremated his body and brought his relics to the Buddha. The Buddha took the relics of Sariputra from Kundi and said to all monks, "Pikus, this is Sariputra." Whose wisdom is profound and great, he realized the truth and practiced dharma accordingly. He also strived to propagate the dharma for the sake of the people. He had already attained liberation from all sufferings. Just look, pigs! This is the relics of a Buddha son. Next, Sariputra's best friend. Malgarayana, who foremost in supernatural powers, he was born in a Brahmin family in Makata, India. Both Malgarayana and Sariputra ordained as monks under the Buddha. Malgarayana attained arahatship with supernatural powers seven days after ordination. Both. Magarayana and Sariputra were Buddha's chief disciples in the Sangha order. Quite often in the drawing, we can see Magarayana always stood on Buddha's left, while Sariputra stood on his right. Why Magarayana has such supernatural powers? In his past life, he was a fisherman. He realized that. Earning his livelihood by catching fish would result in bad karma, and one must cultivate merits for a better future. He decided to change his life. Once he met a Pratyaka Buddha, and was impressed with his dignified manner, so he invited the Pratyaka Buddha to his house to receive offerings. The Pratyaka Buddha was not good in preaching. He could only use his divine powers to save the world. After his meal, he jumped into the air and moved freely in all directions. Magayana was so impressed that he vowed to attain supernatural powers in his next life. He finally achieved preeminence. In supernatural powers during his next life, when he was Buddha's disciple, Magarayana was noted for his filial piety. When he saw his mother suffering in the realm of hungry ghosts, he was very sad 
and tried to use his supernatural power provided a bowl of rice for his mother. However, when the rice reached his mother's mouth, it turned into charcoal and could not be eaten. Thought he has supernatural power, he could not explain his mother's suffering. So he asked the Buddha. Buddha explained, Makarayana, your mother had in her previous life slander the Buddha and the Sangha. Moreover, she did not believe in retribution and had been greedy and hot tempered. That is why she is receiving such a retribution in this life. The reason why you do not know your mother's karma is that your miraculous power has been hindered by the love between mother and son. Lord Buddha, is there any way to help my mother get out from the realm of hungry ghosts? Malgarayana asked earnestly. Malgarayana, you cannot save your mother on your own because of her bad karma. The only way is to rely on the powers of the holy monks to help her free from the suffering in the realm of hungry ghosts. The 15th of the 7th lunar month every year is the last day of summer rain retreat for all monks and many of them will have attained enlightenment by then. If one makes offerings to all holy monks on this day, he can rely on their united efforts to release his parents and relative from the suffering. If his parents are alive, they will live a longer and happier life. Magarayana followed Buddha's instructions and made offerings to all monks on the last day of summer rain retreat. His mother immediately fled from her suffering. This is the origin of the Ulampana festival. Here is another story of the limitation of supernatural powers. When the Buddha's homeland, Kapilavastu, was invaded by King Vidudapa of Kosala, Makarayana insisted on saving the crane people with his Miraculous power, despite Buddha explained this was due to the karma of Syaka Kling. He flew into Kapila's Vastu and selected the 500 outstanding Syakas and put them in a bowl. When he had safely flown out of the country, he opened the bowl and found that the 500 people in it had already turned into a flood of blood. Malgarayana then realized one could not violate the law of cause and effect taught by the Buddha. Even supernatural power could not outmatch of the karmic effect. Malgarayana propagating the Buddha Dharma even when he was getting older. This had invited the jealousy of the heretics. They could not harm the Buddha, but they awaited a chance to kill Magarayana. Once, while Magarayana was on a mission of propagating the Dharma, the heretics saw him passing by the foot of a hill. They pushed some heavy rocks down the hill, and he was crushed to death. Many pigus wonder, why Magarayana did not use his great supernatural powers to resist the heretics. The Buddha said, Pigus, Magarayana could have protected himself with his miraculous power, but he knew that no one could escape the karmic result due to the cause and effect. Since he killed many lives in his previous life, he had to go through this karmic effect. In addition, he had vowed to devote his life to the truth. As his wish had come true, he greatly entered Nirvana. 
Dear friends, among the ten great disciples of Buddha, Sariputra and Magalyana were the heretics' top scholars and leaders. Once they ordained under the Buddha, they have strong faith in Dharma and high respect for the Buddha. They never criticize the Buddha. We, as a Buddhist, we should learn from them. Thank you for joining this online English Dharma service. Let us join our palms and dedicate the joy and merits from this session to all sentient beings, may all free from the suffering. Once again, thank you for joining us. If you find this Dharma service is helpful to you, please subscribe to the Fokuangsan English Dharma Service YouTube channel and share it to your friends. Last but not least, I wish you all stay safe, stay healthy, and stay awesome. See you next week. Omitovo.